presenting the X96 Air. And this is my first M-Logic S905 X3 4K TV box. After a stellar performance from the X2 CPU this year, it leaves only to wonder what kind of performance the X3 will deliver. Up next, I have a full review of this new chipset and let's see how it does as an entry-level TV box. Stay tuned, you have that right after the break. So I'm back, and this is the box that it's packed in. There are no hardware specs listed anywhere on the outside, only that it is the new M-Logic S905 X3 CPU along with some standard features. And without further ado, I will proceed with the unboxing. In the box you have your standard contents. You have the new X96 Air TV box itself. You get one infrared remote. One HDMI cable. A 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter. And a user's manual. Let's take a look at its design and what ports we have on this box. The body is made of plastic, with the X96 Air logo printed to the top. To the rear of the box, you have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one audio video port, one USB 2.0 port, and a DC power input jack. To one side. You have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and a microSD card reader. There is nothing on the other side. To the front, you have an LED clock display. And below the box, you have no cooling vents. I will now set it up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm back, and setting up the box was pretty standard. As I boot up for the first time, you are greeted with a new X96 logo animation for a few seconds. Then you're taken directly to the launcher. So this is the launcher. And it's really nice to see a new launcher for a change, and let's see what features it has to offer. The launcher is broken down into five pages which are accessible by this side panel. It comprises of a home page, an apps page, a movie shortcuts page, a music shortcuts page, and a settings page. On the home page you have a shortcuts bar for adding shortcuts by simply clicking on the add button and selecting which apps you'd like to add or remove. On each page the buttons are fixed in position, and it does not have the option to arrange the buttons as seen in recent boxes, and there is no option to create additional pages. Sadly, this launcher does not have a navigation bar or status bar for navigating with an air mouse or PC mouse, and I will have to install the menu button and snowball app as an alternative. In the settings area under droid settings you have the following options. 4K resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the option to set priority between video and graphics. HDR display settings. Audio settings, with the option to select the audio output medium. Power key options. You have picture mode options and CEC control options. In the device preference area you have your standard system options, and an additional option to select an array of advanced Dolby Audio options including Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio settings. In the apps section, they have included the AirScreen app, app installer, Chrome browser, wireless updates, KD Player, Miracast, movie player, Netflix, the Google Play Store, and YouTube. I will now install my usual set of apps and return with the rest of the review. So I'm back, and to start this segment I will first check the root state of the box. The root check app shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. 
This means that you have the freedom to install any app from the Google Play Store or sideload any APK without restrictions. The SuperUser app that grants root access to the box cannot be updated, and any attempts to change or update the app will freeze the box during the boot-up process. If this happens then the only way to restore the box is to flash the firmware. The next bit of information is the Digital Rights Management or DRM for short. This information tells if the box is equipped with the digital rights and the encryption to play premium streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in HD and 4K quality. The information shown here reveals that the box has Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This is insufficient to play premium streaming services in HD and 4K quality, and it will require Google Widevine Level 1 and some form of protection to be qualified. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Droid Logic, and the model is the X96 Air P1. It comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 32GB of internal storage from which this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.0, indicated by the 4 Plus, and I will connect a device to this later in the video. The CPU is the Quad-Core ARM Cortex-A55 CPU running up to 1.9 GHz in 32-bit mode. The CPU is the Mlogic S905X3, and it is configured with 32-bit ABIs. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz and OpenGLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual-band 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the box is running on Android 9 operating system, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box is running between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius under normal operation, and we will monitor to see how high it increases during treaty gaming. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos, and I will test its Dolby features in a moment. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's see how it does in the benchmark segment and where it fits on the rankings chart. First, I show the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speed. The results show that the X96 Air has a RAM copy speed of 3186 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 138 megabytes per second and a write speed of 77. This is a good score, the same as previous S905X2 boxes. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results showed the same pattern from my last video, where on my 100 megabytes package, the X96 Air has maximum download speed only on the 5 GHz band. The 2.4 band fell below the maximum speed by 54%. And the LAN port fell even further by 79% due to only having 100 megabits per second maximum bandwidth. So for the fastest speeds use the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band. I now show the results of the new Antutu version 8 benchmark, the score I will use to place it on my chart. The X96 Air got a score of 74,439. And this is a good score, and it should rank somewhere close to the S905X2 models. The CPU benchmark shows that the box got a Geekbench 4 score of 804 single-core, and 2234 multi-core. Another good score by the X96 Air, and we will compare it on the chart to the previous X2 CPU. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme and the Slingshot GPU Graphics benchmark. The X96 Air got a score of 5,605 in the Ice Storm Extreme, and 521 in the Slingshot Test. These scores should perform well in some Android games which I will try in a moment. But before I proceed, let's see where it placed on my chart. So after updating the scores, the X96 Air placed at number 10 in reference to Antutu scores, which is pretty good for this box, placing it among the top 10 TV boxes for 2019. You can find this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format, where you can interact with it and compare different scores, see the link in the description area. To start this next segment, I will first check to see if alternative launchers can work on this box. I installed the ADW Launcher 2 and it works with drag and drop features and pop-up app menus.
I will now check to see if screen rotation works on this box, given that it's a new launcher. The results reveal that screen rotation does not work on this launcher. For entertainment features the box comes pre-installed with Netflix. You cannot install Netflix directly off of the Google Play Store you have to sideload it using an alternative APK App Store. You can also install Amazon Prime Video off of the Play Store directly. I cannot play any movie samples as to cause any infringement on this channel, only to say that both Netflix and Amazon Prime plays in standard 480p quality due to limited DRM support. The YouTube app comes pre-installed, but it's not the updated Android TV version. You can easily update this version with the one from the Aptoid App Store, so you can play videos in 4K quality up to 2160p resolution. For users who like to cast their mobile devices to TV boxes, the X96 Air comes pre-installed with Miracast and the AirScreen app. Watch as I cast my mobile phone using Miracast. This is true Miracast that plays in high resolution, so in this demonstration there are more latency than usual. To fix this you simply lower the cast resolution for a smoother cast quality. I will now play my list of 4K video samples comprising of 4K HDR 10-bit videos at 60 frames per second, and videos with Dolby Atmos and DTS audio formats. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is...
Dean makes it 1-1. Atletico back in this. The Liga title in their hands again. Gold Atletico Madrid. Fantastic headed finished by Diego Godin. That is textbook Diego Godin in the area. Getting his head onto the corner. Juries, executioners, judges. Welcome to the inside of your head. The new X96 Air played the videos without issues, and videos with digital audio formats also played OK. I will now play my list of 4K video samples comprising of 4K HDR 10-bit videos at 60 frames per second and videos with Dolby Atmos, Dolby True HD, and DTS audio formats.
jump into the inside of your head. The new X96 Air played the videos without issues. The VLC player cannot play Dolby True HD format, so Kodi Media Player was used. Likewise, Kodi Media Player could not play TS video format so the VLC player was used. In the end, the box is capable of playing all the digital audio formats, it just depends on what player you use. For my final demonstration I played some Android games. During the first set of games I recorded some temperatures in the high 70s, so I applied some active cooling and it remained in the mid 50s. The X96 Air has very good gaming performance, but due to inadequate ventilation I experienced some throttling due to too much heat. Once active cooling was applied gaming was smooth and there was no throttling. So after the goal we've opened the scoring here, 1-0. And it's cut out by Messi.
so in the end the games played okay and I also used two different keymapping apps without issues. In summary, the new CPU performs great. This is not the best housing design for this mainboard as it doesn't provide sufficient ventilation. It has all the features of the previous X2 CPU but with higher performance. On the downside, it does not come with a navigation bar or status bar.